The Nigeria Center for Disease Control has warned that continuous rain coupled with the collapse of the Alao Dam in Borno State could have health implications. Director General Jide Idris says it is beefing up inspection to prevent uh, the spread of waterborne diseases as the rains continue. He said that malaria, typhoid and cholera have high chances of increasing. Well, earlier, statistics released by the center showed that 216 people had died from cholera in 2024 alone. Now, 168 deaths are from Lassa fever. It also confirmed 67 cases of the Mpox in 2024. This year alone, Lassa fever cases, meningitis cases were more in number and death rates this year that we saw the previous years. Flooding can increase the number of diarrhea cases. They can increase the number of cholera cases, gastroenterological typhoid cases, even malaria cases because of mosquito transmission, typhoid, uh, hepatitis, dengue fever. These are the diseases that flooding can actually increase or cause. Again, you have the, because of water runoff, this one-off can again introduce chemicals from the ground that can be pollutants, that can be detrimental to the health of the people. And once they come together, they can cause others, other things. You have in some you have industrial waste that this flood can actually push and carry again. This is how, this is how they make people more susceptible to the health consequences of a, of a flood. That's why it's very essential for us again to address this issue both states now should get ready, especially in Bonus State, where we have this. We are, our staff are working with NEMA now again to help address the, these issues. Right, let's bring in uh, the man you just saw there, Dr. Jide Idris. He's the Director General of Nigeria's Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Uh, good to see you. Good to have you on Newsnight. It's been quite a, a while. Now, I mean, you've raised the alarm, you're, yeah. you know, uh, calling attention of the state governors, including, of course, uh, Borno State, to do something quickly about mm. uh, the flooding because it will have domino effect. I mean, you just reeled out some of the consequences, you mm. know, that, that uh, could arise uh, from the flooding. But beyond the alerts, what specific measures are you putting in place uh, to assist not just Borno State, but to ensure that uh, all 36 states don't find themselves in, you know, a situation where uh, this uh, disease outbreaks following flooding. Well, that, <clears throat> that's one of the reasons why we made the alert. This is, that was, two days ago, the second time we we're making that. Right. With respect to flooding. And what we've done is that we sent adversary addresses to the various state governments. We met with the commissioners of uh, health just, and told them precisely what to do and how to establish their own preparedness and response teams in the various states and be prepared. We, we are, our whole role is just to support them in whatever they need to do mm. in terms of uh, format. They need to stockpile all the material they probably will need just in case this thing happen. Stockpile what material take, specifically? Take for instance now, when I said this about Bonu State two mm. days ago, mm. I'd never seen the, the damage. The magnitude I just it. heard it. And when I saw the magnitude, uh, what we've done now is that you look at the possible diseases that could occur and look at the materials in terms of drugs, uh, IV fluids, in, I mean, <coughs> uh, fluids, treatment um, materials, and uh, even some for respira respiratory things, maybe all those, all those things you may need to treat those cases in case you have them. Mm. And funny enough, uh, I think a team, we dispatched a team to Bono State yesterday. Okay. And um, I spoke to the lead man just this evening. They were up there, they're going to have discussions with the Director of Public Health and the Commissioners for Health and plan. They're going to do their own independent assessment, but a, a fast one. Mm -hmm. And then deliver, I mean, the materials left this morning, so they should be there later this evening. And um, I'm lucky to go there on Sunday just to see what will happen. But the fact is that they must be prepared. Now you have IDPs, which right. is even worse. Mm -hmm. Apart from the real diseases, because of a huge population of people, they're going to have respiratory diseases, they're going to have fungal diseases, all sorts of things. So these are the things we need to talk to the health officials there too. And perhaps again, they have to look for search staff to assist them. Right. Maybe volunteers, whatever it is, Red Cross people. And, and I also do know that some of our partners are on their way there, they've been there. 
we are working with them now to raise resources to be able to get more things. Mm -hmm. We'll do our own independent ass assessment and see. But I'm told that there's even a cholera outbreak there now. Already? So luckily, at least a lot of the materials we send there have also include things they could use for treat, to treat cholera. But whether they'll be enough or not until they do that, there is another right, matter right, entirely. Right, 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 right now, speaking of cholera outbreak, let's um, you know uh, look at the bigger picture where there seems to be a surge. In mm. Whether it's cholera, you're talking about mpox and mm -hmm. what have you. What exactly is driving uh, this surge? Well, it depends on the disease. For cholera, for instance, mm. I always said it's a disease of uh, lack of water, ac poor access to clean water. And in the case of Bono, for what I've told again, there were some areas there that had no water sources at all, which is a terrible situation. The other one is personal hygiene. <laughs> and uh, the commonest is the human defecation. It's very high over there. Again, these are the things again that increase the occurrence of cholera. And of course, environmental hygiene, waste disposal, poor waste disposal, all sorts of things. It and almost sounds like you know lack of governance at the different levels. I mean, the, the citizens are not to provide water for themselves. Yes. Or you know all the other amenities. Uh, this is have come up again. I think again with respect to cholera, mm. it's a development issue, and right. to me it's related to physical planning, mm. planning for cities. Bear in mind your population. You know population increases, and when you are planning for a city. You plan for other amenities that will be required. Toilet facilities, water sources, drainage issues. Because when you don't have that, you have flood, there's nowhere to go. They, they, they cause devastation. Mm. And those are the things again. And you see, I mean, so how is NCDC mm. coming in here? I know in the case of MPOX, for example, I mean, you, uh, Nigeria received some 10,000 doses of MPOX in uh, August. Uh, is it being distributed? Now, as we speak, well, as we what's speak, the with that? NCDs doesn't deal with vaccines, but oh. we work hand in hand with the Nigerian Primary Healthcare Development Agencies. They handle the issue of vaccines distribution, but we work hand in hand with them. With respect to MPOX, and generally, my belief is that we can never have enough vaccines to go around. Mm -hmm. Vaccines are only effective when given before the disease occurred. Okay. Now, very few, very few companies... As a preventive measure. Yes, very few companies mm. manufacture vaccines worldwide. And unfortunately, we always tend to lag behind when you need to... Like, that's, that's part of stockpiling. Mm. You have to prepare for in and So you have these seasonal things. You know when this is occurring, you start planning ahead. Unfortunately, it's not only Nigeria that has cholera cases. Yeah. We have in Asia also. So, but some of this is... So there is a rush for that inadequate, inadequate vaccines. So we can never get enough. And that's Isn't why, that why we should begin focus, to look in what to do apart from our work should be we look at what prevention. Prevention. Mm -hmm. Prevention. You say prevention is, is mother, whatever it is. Better than better than cure. cure. Mm -hmm. Now, if you can now the other one is that we should start looking inwards now for local uh, manufacture of vaccines. I think the current government now is already looking into that. But they're very many they require a lot of um, expertise technology and all. And I know there's a co quite a number of groups again working on different vaccines. Mm. I know that I'm heading the task force on uh, Lassa fever vaccine. Okay. And the process of production is long. You need to go through good research work and that kind of thing. I know there's a group looking into, um, I think they're working on, mal on malaria vaccine. There's a malaria vaccine. Mm -hmm. And they're looking into this cholera issue. Cholera vaccine, but we cannot get enough. So our focus really should be on prevention what people should do, we look at what causes it, what kind of organisms cause this, and I see how to prevent the spread. Right. That way it's better. Than mm. Now, you have this One Health approach. Uh, talk to us about that and what you uh, envisage it will achieve. No, it will achieve a lot, but that's the global focus now, approach. Because most of diseases, especially of epidemic proportion we see now, mm. are mainly diseases of ani I mean, animals. It, Zoonotic. zoonotic diseases. Right. You're taking from cholera, COVID, yellow fever, all those, all this, all this, Lassa fever, the disease of animals that find, that find their ways into human beings. And so, whatever measures you want to take, you can keep treating if you don't address the cause. It's a waste of time. Mm -hmm. So it depends on, it's incumbent on us for health ministries, the Minister of Agriculture, Minister of Environment, because there are environmental factors. Climate change is a major factor now. Yeah. So three of us now, that's, that's, the, that's the one health approach. 
You jointly sit down and look at health policies, plans, because the surveillance activity that we do in the animal health is quite different from the same surveillance that they do in human health. I mean, animal, I mean, we do in human health. Right. But the point is that once they see any disease animals, the chances are that if care is not taken, it's going to spread the human beings. And the other I mean, fact, environmental factors that are actually predisposed to this. So three of those agencies must work together mm -hmm. to have, have a common plan, common approach, and share data, share information so that we can man... Is there, is there a timeline for you know, the outcome of this um, no, it's a continuous, working together? It's a continuous thing. Right. I met the team in place, so we're already forging ahead again. And okay. the other thing we're looking into again, apart from Lassa fever together, cholera together, mm -hmm. uh, even uh, mpox together, because most of these things, they're all animal diseases. So it's a continuous thing. Mm -hmm. The fact that we have to forge that uh, collaborative approach. In any emergency, it requires teamwork. Absolutely. No one agency or no one can do it alone. Can do it alone. So there right. must be collaboration. Now this uh, zoonotic thing, let's mm. uh, very quickly before I let you go. I mean, in the case <laughs> of Borno State, yeah. you know, with the flooding, we hear about 80% of the animals, uh, unfortunately, mm. died. So what should we be uh, envisaging and how can you counter, you know, what is likely to be the fallout? For the, the animals that have died, yes. we need to be sure and uh, ensure that they're properly buried so that they don't decompose any help. Once they decompose again, they can always spread. We don't know what disease they're carrying. Hmm. So we need to work again with animal, uh, the animal uh, the Minister of Agriculture, or those of them who deal with it. They right. never have a way of disposing of them properly. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, if you look at MPOX, for instance, now, mm. the interest is that the only state that we have not recorded MPOX is Yobi. Now, that doesn't mean that they don't have. Perhaps, again, it may be due to poor reporting. We are looking at that. Every Yobe, other state. Yobe state, I actually thought it was Borno state that had not reported. It's Yobe state. Oh, I've got state. The, the latest okay. case in Borno state. Now. All the other states in Nigeria have one case each. Is there uh, under reporting? We don't no, have time. Yeah, <laughs> we'll have but generally, it's under reported because no state will want to say that, oh, they have this problem. Okay. <laughs> we'll have to leave it there. Yeah. Dr. Jide Idris, mm -hmm. DG, Nigeria Center for Disease Control and mm -hmm. Prevention. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. Maybe the next time you're here, we'll talk more about the prevention part of things. Okay.